start all over now. I know, right? So let's do it again. Just kidding. <laughs> Meeting minutes have been approved. It's going to look weird on the recording, like I just decided. <laughs> um, so we could get to the uh, second item review, discuss, and possibly vote on capital project proposed for funding in fiscal year 2024 and future years. We had at the end of last meeting, we had, or during the meeting, we put together a list of questions um, and additional information that committee members would want. Um, so I uh, post those questions um, to the people who had submitted the projects. And we have um, information that was included in your packet. Um, it was really sent with an email yesterday and then an email today. Um, and we also have two uh, folks in the audience, Fred Olaski's here and uh, Steve Savini's here to talk about um, the projects that uh, they submitted. So I guess maybe, maybe we should start with their project I was thinking, so that they can go away. We could entertain. Uh, what they have to talk about. So, um, anybody want to go first? He was here first. All right. If you want to go first, okay. I'm I'm here as a trustee of the Waverly Library, uh, one of the six trustees, and we've been looking at making uh, capital improvements to the to the building itself. Uh, I think we've got another proposal in to do something on the exterior windows. And we're also looking for CPC funding for the steps in the front. Uh, my long term goal is to do something with the energy efficiency of the, of the building. Uh, and just, just add in that I'm more on the, I, I guess the library is on the next schedule to, to submit a proposal for green communities. Once we're done with the, the project we have going here, and at that time we're going to look at all the energy improvements to the library because right now the heating system is a combination of mini splits, which are electric, and oil fired burner furnace that's over 40 years old. Uh, so, oil fired burner burner. Furnace is, is a backup system for mini splits. Mini splits can't supposedly keep up on cold days like we're getting here in the next couple of weeks. I mean, next couple of days, let's say the week. Uh, so the only heat in there right now is from the mini splits. Today, that's all that's working. Uh, for the, the bathrooms that were recently remodeled, I guess I don't know the reasoning. Not, nothing was done for heating in the bathrooms downstairs that were remodeled. There's a, a handicapped bathroom and also next to it an all gender bathroom. The mini splits are working. There's no heat in there, none at all. There are radiators way up high against the ceiling. Uh, that work when the oil fire burner provides heat. Otherwise, there's no heat there at all. Uh, what the staff has been doing there is open, leaving the door open. If they remember when they leave on the night at night or on weekends to get heat in there. Uh, or if somebody's in there or during the daytime when the library is open, uh, there's still no heat there. Uh, and I guess one of the proposals I'm making is that we put in a baseboard heaters and then two units so you don't have to rely on making sure the doors are open, either weekends or even when people are there. Uh, and don't rely on the oil fired burner furnace, which hopefully is going to be obsolete in a few years to be removed. Uh, <clears throat> And the other problem with, with leaving the doors open now, somebody in a wheelchair has difficulty getting in because you have to maneuver around the close, around the open door that's got a wedge on the bottom to keep it open to get in. But once you get in, then you've got to 
mess around with the door to close the door to get in. Uh, with baseboard heaters, uh, electric baseboard heaters near the near the uh, floor would maintain heat and there would have to have the doors open uh, and worry about the pipes freezing. We have that situation in the town hall. When we upgraded the town hall, there's rooms in there, and especially closet areas that have baseboard heaters to maintain a, a minimum temperature. And so I'm proposing that we do that for one in the, in the library. And, and kind of the, the reason it makes sense, we're, we're looking at electrical improvements. Baseboard heaters are electrical. It's the ones we're proposing. And we're going to do some significant electric improvements into the, in the building. This would be the time to add that uh, kind of work to the to the electrical contract because we we're proposing uh, the electrician be there to add add circuits for the two electric heaters. They're very easy to do because one can come off of the light switch is already there. The other one can go up in the back room and through the wall to put it put it in the in that other bathroom. Uh, so the, the other the electrical improvements we're proposing are for adding circuits in the director's room. When you first come in, there's a, on the left side, there's a, there's a director a, a front desk where people sit, there are great people and all that. There is a power cord that goes from that desk to another power cord it's into the director's office towards the front of the building. So you got two power cords connected with one outlet on the floor. It's really a safety hazard. <clears throat> what do you we're think? The, we're proposing put more outlets into the director's office and eliminate the, the double uh, extension cords basically that are going into and to do that. And then the other, other, if we're going to add electrical, the other one would be in the children's room, first floor. You come in to the right, in the far right, there's a room. There's only one outlet behind the bookcase. Uh, we're proposing to add two or three, maybe one on each wall around on that, in that room for, for use in there. So, uh, so, so that would be another electrical outlet, another component. And the other thing, that we've we've done in the in the town hall, and Dan can attest to that. We put in a surge protector for uh, electrical surges. So if you get a surge, power surge, it won't damage your electronics or whatever is operating in a building. We've got a lift now in the library, like we do town hall. Uh, it's going to be expensive if something happens if you get a power surge to replace that. Uh, the components of it. We also, well, got computers there. You could you have uh, the mini splits are electric working. So if you get a power surge and that circuit doesn't work, well, you don't have heat that in the building either. So we're proposing a, uh, a, a power surge protector for the building that would be mounted near the control panel, near the electrical panel that comes this electrical panel where the electricity comes in from the street. Uh, it's a small unit. You know, so we have it in the town hall. I even have one in my own house. It's a small unit that fits there. It's not real expensive. Uh, so there are basically the, the electric improvements that we like to see done in the, in the library. And of course, the other thing, considering if we're gonna do some electrical improvements, is to look at the on-demand hot water uh, units for for the bathrooms and the, and the kitchen area. Uh, right now, the hot water from for the entire building, well, it's the two bathrooms, the kitchen area, and the uh, maintenance room there. Through the four locations come from a water heater that sits near the furnace. 
food, and I think it's about a 20 gallon, 20 gallon water heater that is eight years old. Electric water heater, that, that's what provides the, the hot water for the building. I was there the other day, and, and also a couple of weeks ago, you know, I could put my hand under there and I never never had to remove it from the, from the faucet when I turned it on, just hot water. Uh, yes, there is controls on the unit to adjust the temperature. We looked at it, it's set at the maximum you can have it for, for a public building. The state law says a, a minimum 110 up to 130 at the maximum, but the state law requires. So even turned up at the maximum, we weren't getting enough hot water in the bathrooms. And if you think about it, that's a long ways. That's like from, that's like here, assuming you want hot water here, going to the other end of the building here. We turn on the faucet here. We got to wait for the water from the other end of the building to come over here. Well, meantime, you got to fill the pipe with hot water. Once we got hot water in that room, in that bathroom, I went into the into the kitchen area, which is a lot closer to the to the water heater. Uh, distance wise, it was maybe 10 feet. But the plumbing to get to it goes up in the ceiling and comes all the way down. So you got probably 40 feet of plumbing before you get to that sink. The water was barely warm. I went to the other other location and to the maintenance sink there. There was no hot water. We drained the unit already. All that water is sitting in the line before you can get to it. So uh so I'm proposing that we, we get uh, on-demand hot water system, uh, on-demand units. And I've been looking at, looking at some just, just and that was in the proposal we got from the, from, from the electrical contractor. Uh, here's, I'm gonna double stop this. Here's what we have in the in the town hall now. You go there, look if you want. Go into, into the women's bathroom. It's in the women's bathroom. Well, and the and the sink and the, and the kitchen area. Proposing, you know, for three hundred dollars, we could get two units that would provide hot water in on demand location uh, under each sink. Uh, Versus, I think the last page is an example of what the water heater, water tank that's there today for almost twice the price. And like I say, it's eight years old. The warranty to buy a new one is only three years. Three years on a water tank for that for that kind of water tank. It's three years. The warranty for the on demand, I think, is seven years. So if we're going to do electrical improvements in a building, you need to run an electrical circuit to the to the, to the sink where that on-demand heater would be, water heater would be. So with two units, we could we would put one into the in the bathroom, <clears throat> share that would work on both sinks. The other one would be in the kitchen area where we're going to understand we have to put a water meter and do some work there anyway for the switch over to the town water. So it would be, it would be a ideal location to put one there. So you need electric circuit there. You can run it short. You can run it uh, close to the the uh, the maintenance sink over there. Move it to the other side of the door. The mop so sink. The mop sink. So you can the mop sink would come off the one that's in the kitchen. kitchen. Yes. So you would have all four fixtures coming off instant hot water. Do it with two. With, with two units, yes. That's that's what we like to do uh, for library improvements. And discontinue the uh, electric hot water heater off the front. Right, Let's continue that. Because uh, there was, it's been there eight years. It was replaced because I heard the old one flooded. Nobody knew it over the weekend there to put water in that room. So that's yeah, going to run all the time, even if nobody yeah. did. Yeah, it's going to run. It's going to run all the, all the time. 
And the lifespan of a water heater is 10 to 15 years in general anyway. Right. But, but yes, in general, but, but I think that one, I think you can even see in the picture, there's no way draining it. You can't, you can't, a small one like that isn't made to, to drain and to maintain. It's made to replace. You buy it and you throw it away after. When it fails, I mean, you can't maintain. There's no, there's no uh, electrical or anode rods. You call it. They go in there and you can replace, fix it. You can't, you can't do anything with it. If you buy a new unit, when this, when this one fails, it's in there. You're gonna, well, you're gonna be back to uh, trying to get hot water again. Fred, what do you think the future uh, plan is for heat in that building when the oil, that gigantic oil boiler is no longer functional at all? Right. Uh, the, the future plan to me is mini splits. That's what we have in a town hall. We have well, I don't know, 16 or 18 mini splits uh, that provides the only heat for that whole building and the air conditioning. But mostly the heat. Uh, and I haven't heard where the pipes are frozen or there's problems with the heat in there in that building. I don't know what anybody else has. But uh, how's the electric use? Anyone have any idea? Yeah, if you discontinue the big furnace, you don't have to worry about the pipes. Pipes, yeah. You worry about the pipes or, or the price of oil. Uh, there, there is. There is some, it's a mini splits in there now. My, my concern is, and that's why they have the oil as a backup, they're not the latest technology in the mini splits. And that's why if we hire consultants with green communities, they will analyze the efficiency of that and, and the uh, programming and setting up of, of the building to maintain a temperature. I don't think that, I, I don't know, I may be wrong, then the units need to be upgraded or you need to add more units. I have them in my house. I have two units, uh, I tell you, mostly for air conditioning, I added, and they, they work if I need, if I need supplemental heat. But, but the specs say you can go down to minus 10 degrees, zero to 10 degrees, minus 10 degrees, and they'll work. Well, here, these units only go down to 20 degrees or something. Uh, work and, and there are right. there are houses there are houses in town and being an assessor we go look at inspect houses go inside we look at the heating system and we make notes of that there are some newer houses that's all they have is is some mini splits for for heat and electricity plus you know we've got our our, our example at the town hall huh? I mean that to me that's the future is to do all that and Yes, you may increase more in electricity costs. Well, it's either electricity or, or oil. And I guess who knows which is going to be cheaper in the future or which is going to be around in the future. You know, if we're looking at, at, at electricity for the town buildings at reduced cost, you know, uh, you know, even if we increase our usage at the library, it's certainly come out cheaper. So, so does anybody have any other questions about the proposal? I do have a question for Fred. Fred, this Brandt. Um, you there was a note in your response to Brian about the plumbing needing upgrades, and I was a little unclear on that part. It didn't seem like plumbing upgrades were built into this proposal. So, could you just elaborate on that, please? Well, uh, the plumbing upgrade, well, if we were to connect the mop sink to the kitchen, you're going to need a, I don't know, five, 10 foot run of plumbing. So that, to me, that's lots of plumbing up upgrade to, to do that. And and even the, the way the uh, water system runs, runs today up in the ceilings and, and all around, uh, Depending on what prices we get from a plumber here, it may be possible to put in, uh, I think it's allowed for commercial public buildings to put in PEX line, a PEX line direct from the water heater under the sink. You can go, you can have PEX go over to the mop sink 
And then you run another line the other way to the bathrooms. And forget about all the lines that go up and down like this through the ceilings. Yes, you may need you may need them okay for the toilet, for the, for the sink, and the and the commodes, whatever you may need that one, but not for the heat. Just need the cold water. That's yeah, right. just the cold water. Yeah. Uh, if the what what do you see as the control system for the heat in the bathroom? Is that will be on thermostat? Well, the individual each each baseboard heater would have its own thermostat. Okay, but that would it. As long as it's on that, it wouldn't be nothing on a timer. We wouldn't have no. that. Probably not. No. So that'll be running all weekend whenever the. Well, to maintain a minimum. Doesn't damage. run. What? Doesn't run. Depends what you set it at. Oh, the on demand. Yeah, it's on demand. No, I'm talking about the, 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 heat. The, the heat, not the water. If you want. I'm talking about the, 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 the heater in the bathroom. Oh, the baseboard, baseboard heater. Well, be what you set the minimum temperature on. If you set it at 50 degrees, say. It won't come on until it's 50 degrees or below. Oh, well, yeah, but you we... want to set above 50 degrees. Yeah. It's got to be programmable to some degree, hopefully, so it's warm enough when people go in the buildings and use, but right. not. Right. And, and the way technology is today, you, you can do it with your smartphone, probably, if you get the right unit. Well, as, as long as you get the right, that's what I'm saying, as long as you get the right unit. Right unit in there, or you need to change the controls in a few years at that standard, change the controls. Uh, but we're looking at, you know, if, if, if our proposal, if my proposal here uh, gets approved, you know, well, we're, we're looking at the end, end of this year to, to do something or the after town meeting to get, uh, get something started. Uh, but the other, the other improvements, you know, by the time you go through green community and you apply and do an assessment and, and you awarded a grant, we're looking two, three years for now to do anything on that. So in the meantime, our tank water heater may go in three years. Well, I don't, I don't know. Or we're living without heat for three years in the bathroom. I, I, I think we need to do something sooner. And once we have an electrical contractor who gave us a price, I got a bid for a price for, for the electrical wood. Uh, well, I we actually got two bids. I went, for, I went out for I mean, three contractors, local in town contractors to get that. It was more difficult to get a uh, plumbing uh, bid on that. Uh, this time of year, plumbers are, are busy fixing the heating system. So trying to get a, a real definite answer. But, but the the price that I got for, for the electrical, I, I guess I'm Confident that we could do it for that. I mean, it was, it was a good solid estimate. I know that the contractors are glad of it. One thing, you know, we'll see, but I think, uh, see what we get uh, in six months from now, really, when we're looking to do it. So, cool. Does anybody else have any other questions? No, I just want to say those baseboard heaters. Even if it was turned down low, when somebody came in, they they turned it up. It only takes a few minutes yeah. for for something yeah, like they're, that. They're very bathroom. responsive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Is that it? Yep. 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 All right. Shall we move on up? Thanks, for police. Yep. Thank you, Thank you for coming in. Thank you. I'm gonna tase everybody. Well, let let that digest a minute <laughs> before we switch gears. That was a lot. A lot of information. You got <laughs> baseboard heaters in your building, you know? At the police station? No. 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 So it's out of here. Out of here. Out of here on propane. <laughs> Whatever. All right. So I don't really know where to start with this, but um, thanks for the opportunity to allow me to come in and talk about this. I didn't really submit a proposal. Um, because literally I'm still waiting for numbers from the vendor. Um, I have pretty pretty good numbers at this point. Um, I had met with Joyce and Brian last week. We were going to talk about this a little bit, but I didn't have the numbers then, so we didn't even really really talk about it. Um, but essentially what what's going on is <clears throat> we currently, and this has been going on for we're in our sixth year, going for a sixth year um, with these 
pieces of equipment. So we currently, in the police department, we have body cams. So every officer that's working a shift has a body cam, and anytime we want to call, you turn the body cam on. Um, we also have uh, electronic control weapons, otherwise known as tasers. You probably heard them called as, as tasers. Uh, it's a less lethal force option. Um, so it deploys probes, and I, I brought one, the one we're looking at getting. Um, I brought one with me just to, to show you guys if, if you haven't ever seen one to show you the probes, show you the cartridges. Um, but essentially how they work is that if somebody is assaulted toward, towards a police officer or towards somebody else, um, we have other force options on our, on our belt as well. We can spray a chemical spray, which most people know it as OC or MACE. Um, that just blinds them, gives them a hard time breathing. So that can is incapacitate them that way. We also have a baton that can be used for blocks and strikes or pain compliance techniques. Um, and then we have our handguns that we carry with us. So that's obviously the, the lethal level of force. So in between there, a few years back, this is probably going back 10 years where it started becoming popular in, in Massachusetts is when the, the taser started becoming popular. That introduced another level of force. And so we have in between these levels of forces, we can we can add the, the taser. So we can either um, deploy two probes, which would completely incapacitate a person because there's a spread. So for example, one would one would impact your body high and one would impact your body lower, and then it would connect a current, an electrical current in your body, and it basically makes you tense up your whole body like a, a giant body cramp, and you can't move. Um, you can't fight, you can't do anything. So there's, that's the highest level. And then there's another one, which is just, it's basically a spark or an arc that we can arc the device and touch it to you. And it just causes pain, like a bee sting. So it would feel like getting stung by a bee a bunch of times. Um, that would be pain compliance. That's a lower lower level of force than actually deploying the probes. Um, so looking at where things were going in the world and for officer safety reasons, public safety reasons, we decided to go with tasers. So we, we currently have tasers. The tasers we have are going on six years old. Um, they're electronic devices. And as we were just talking about with electric heaters, you eventually have to replace them. Um, so they say the life expectancy before things start going wrong is about five years. Um, we're going into six years with the, the devices that we currently have. So um, we're looking at replacing the, the tasers. But the biggest component of this is the body cam. So I'll describe the body cams in a little bit, but it's what I'm looking at is a plan or a program with the same manufacturer that does body cams and tasers. So this would be a combined plan for the two two pieces of equipment together so it's not purchasing everything separately it's purchasing everything together in, in one in one thing but the body cams obviously i mean anybody that's got a computer these days knows uh, the effectiveness of cameras uh, especially when when you look at law enforcement everything that we're doing is being recorded everything that we're doing is being recorded and then edited sometimes by people where they show a, a clip of what happens so we have body cams which record the entire incident. So when we go to a scene, we turn on the camera. When we leave the scene, the camera goes off. So it's not recording all the time. It just records when we go to the scene. So it captures from the officer's perspective. And it is only the officer's perspective. So as you can see, I'm wearing our current body cam. It mounts on our chest and it faces forward. So that's the angle that you see. You don't see it from behind or from across the room, you see it from the officer's perspective. So if you ever see incidents where you have body cam and external footage, those two incidents can look completely different based on what, what type of camera you, that you're looking at. So um, again, the, the way the world was going, police reform was coming in, juvenile reform was, was coming in back in 2017, um, most recently police reform in 2020. It's coming into play now and we're making all those changes. So <clears throat> what the police reform did for Massachusetts is it created a committee. It's the Peace Officer Standards Training Committee. That's what POST stands for. Um, so they, in turn, 
meet with our training academies and they say these are the requirements that police have to have for training so you have to meet those training requirements these are also the requirements that we have to have for use of force these are also the the so they have a whole list of things that are requirements from post c that they're giving up to the police departments that are coming down to the police departments which are in the form of cmrs or laws that tell us what we have to do if we have a camera if we have a taser what they have to be so we're essentially being told what we have to have um, so the biggest issue is with the cameras so the cameras that we currently have when you look at the regulations from post c you look at those regulations these cameras don't meet all of those regulations they're they're below standard for those regulations we don't want to go backwards and just get rid of cameras because they, they've helped us in a lot of situations one from um, and a public safety issue that's the big concern public safety the perception of the public we, we capture what's happening um there's a, also an issue we, we haven't had any excessive force complaints or reviews or anything like that since we've had the cameras but what we have noticed is any other general complaints that we get um, from officers all oh, this officer was rude on a motor vehicle stop or this officer swore at me or this officer did this or did that we just go back to the body cams and look at it and i would say these these are based on our incidents i'm not going to speak to the whole nation but based on our incidents i would say 99 percent of those those complaints if you will they're not, they're not even official complaints but so the 99 percent of those concerns go away as soon as people find out that we have body cams i had a, a couple of people talk to me about a, an officer on a motor vehicle stop and i this was just within a couple of weeks ago um i told them oh i'll go back and check the body camera and i'll they'll see what happened on the incident and then i'll i'll get back to him we'll talk about it oh you guys have cameras yeah we, every officer's got it on their body and it captures every incident oh well he wasn't really he wasn't really being unprofessional or rude or mean i just he wasn't being very friendly or so the story starts to change and then it turns to the point where it's like oh never mind you know i could have just been looking at it wrong that's usually what happens from an accountability an officer accountability perspective we're also noticing in in court the last time i went to hearings we had eight motor vehicle hearings out of those eight hearings five people in those hearings denied saying something that the officer said they said or accused the officer of lying about something went back to the cameras all five videos those people it turns out that they were lying the officer did say they said what what the officer wrote in his report they did say that and the officer didn't lie so and those, those are the, the big issues as far as the, the cameras go so we're looking at what what our oc what the regulations tell us we have to have so that's going to change the, the camera that we have that leads to what my proposal is for um, for a capital planning item or ARPA money or some other funding source. I'm not sure how we could fund this, but the number that I got today, um, which these are probably going to be the best numbers to work with for the cameras and the tasers, sixty thousand dollars over a five year period. Oh, so that's that's thirty five thousand less than the original yes request form yep and they, okay. they so they recently changed we got a new sales rep and they recently changed how they're doing they've got some promotions that they're looking at now these numbers will change if if we wait till next year if we wait till the year after to do something these numbers will be going up um and the quote that i got we're looking at these numbers going up incrementally they've worked into the that sixty thousand dollars they've worked into that a three to four percent increase every year for five years so so that's 60 is that 12 a year and then it's going to increase no and it's gonna it's it's a five-year plan so year one they say you have to pay this much year two you pay this much year three you pay this totally much. 60k and over it, the it goes up totally 60k over the life of the of the, in, the um, and that includes the, uh, that includes just so everyone knows, that includes the cloud storage the software yes. yep so that's so that's what i'm going to get into next so this isn't what we currently do is we have we have a laptop computer that we store our videos on that's just a regular laptop computer with no encryption no real security measures or anything in place um, it just stored on an external hard drive 
and we can access the videos from that external hard drive. That's all we do with the cameras right now. Uh, with the tasers, we don't we don't have anything that we use right now to capture data off of the, the taser. They have some proprietary software that we can download. And we plug that we can plug them in and download some information. But with the new plan, the new subscription, I should say, um, is so with the body cameras, it gets the cameras up to the standard that that we're at. And I could, I mean, I could, I don't want to say for you, but I could go through each one of those things and tell you what each one is, but um, they're, they're some fine point things that, that just put us out of compliance. But as far as the, the cameras go, so one of the things is the quality of the camera. These are lower, they're six years old, they're lower quality camera, they're 720 resolution, the new cameras are 1080. Um, with the cameras, we get unlimited cloud storage. So we don't have to have the laptop with the external hard drive anymore. With that cloud storage, which is required, it's going to be required by, by state law, there's some security, cybersecurity measures that have to be in place for that. That's all done from the vendor. They're protecting our footage. They're guaranteeing that it's going to be there. They're guaranteeing that we're going to have access to it and that nobody else will be able to hack into it. All of, all of the security measures will be in place. So unlimited storage. Um, we also have the software to be able to redact. So if something happened in this room, for example, and, and I've got everybody on videotape, and then there's a public record request and somebody wants to see the copy of the video, we can redact other people's faces, we can blur other people's faces out that don't want to be in there, or for protecting the identity of, of victims or, or juveniles, things like that, which we currently don't have the capability of doing. <clears throat> we also currently don't have the capability of sharing this data with the district attorney's office, other than we download it onto a thumb drive, we drive it up there, we give them the thumb drive, they download it onto the computer, and then they hand us the thumb drive back, and then we drive back to town. It's kind of a pain in the neck just to, to bring a video up there. With the new software, they'll be, we can give them access or rights to send them a link for that particular video. They can log in. All they can do is log in and get the link for that video. They can download it, and, and then it becomes evidence at that point. Um, so the evidence is the big issue that, that we're having because we don't have that ability to redact or edit any videos. We only have the ability to just store them on the computer. Um, so a couple of the other things that are kind of required with the new the new CMRs is if, for instance, I, I have to draw my handgun out of the holster for whatever reason, the camera would automatically activate. We have to have a sensor that automatically recognizes when the camera or the taser comes out of the comes out of the holster, then the camera would automatically activate, would automatically turn on. If we forgot to turn it on, somebody ambushes us and we, we have to just draw our gun, it would automatically turn on. So the way the camera works is it stays on and it passively call it passively records. So it's recording all of the time, but until we hit the button, it doesn't actually mark that spot where we can go back and watch the video until we hit that button. So it's passively reporting in the background. So what that gives us the ability to do, which is also a requirement with the, with the CMR, is we have to do pre-reporting and post-reporting. So we have to pre-report at least 30 seconds before I hit the button. And after I turn it off, it has to post-report for another 30 seconds, at least 30 seconds. You can set it up to two minutes. Um, but so that's another capability because what, what's been happening is somebody turns their, their camera off and then something happens and it doesn't get caught on camera. So the bot, the, the camera would post report for a certain set amount of time. And then again, that pre reporting, something happens, it's going to go back 30 seconds. And that's where our reporting will start back at that 30 seconds. So there's a lot of features when it comes to um, the camera and then how it works with the, 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 um, the taser. So one of the other requirements is that it has to have the ability to automatically, so when I stop my video, it has to automatically upload. We don't have that ability. We have to put it into a docking station. So the new stuff, the new um, cameras, as soon as I turn the, the, that video off, it uploads to the cloud automatically. And it's it's there. Assuming we have connectivity. Right. Yeah. Assuming, well, as soon as you have connectivity, it would, like if we're out West Waitley and we're out in no, no service land, as soon as we get back, it'll automatically upload. Um, 
So we don't have to worry about putting it on a docking station, logging in, doing all that stuff. It automatically uploads. It's the same thing with the, the tasers. If I turn the taser on, it sends a message up to the cloud and it stores it as I turn my taser on. Um, if I have to activate the drive sun, which is just the arc, it, it documents that. It also documents when probes are deployed, how long it was activated for, how long it was on for. It gives us all that information and it's uploaded automatically. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I don't want to miss anything as far as the. I have a couple of questions. Required. Sure. Um, so I understand that if you have this equipment, you're required to up, you're going to be required to upgrade it, right? Correct. That, uh, sounds like, regardless of the requirement, you sound pretty committed to the improvements of the the body cams. Like oh. you, per, you as police chief. Are Absolutely. a fan of, of the new upgrades. 100 100 percent. It's not just we need to do this because they tell no, us we no, need no. to. This is this is something that we we've all been looking at. We've all been watching our officers. I mean, everybody, 100 percent of our departments on board with the taser program and the body cam program. Not one complaint. Everybody's on board with it. That's not the same in other departments, but in our department, everybody's. Everybody's on board with it. But we've been looking at these tasers. I've got three taser instructors um, in our department, and they've been bugging me for the last two years. Like these things are the newest, latest, greatest. We, we got to get these things. And they're they're expensive. I mean, the, the tasers themselves, the, the device itself is again, I, I I don't have the final numbers, and then they don't do it like. Here's how much it costs for this unit. Here's how much it costs for the, the data storage for that unit. It's like it's a program and it costs this much per month. So they're about three thousand to thirty five hundred dollars per device, and the, the cameras themselves are about a thousand dollars. So I mean the, the equipment itself, the hardware, if you will, is um, is probably it's a little bit less than half of the price of this the subscription stuff. It's really that's where the money comes in. Is with all the subscription stuff and the, the technology that goes behind it. Um, with the tasers, if we get on this program, the tasers, it includes, it's five years. So within those five years, it's unlimited number of cartridges for training or for real live activated cartridges. They'll replace all of our cartridges. Right now, for me to buy cartridges for the entire department, it's going to cost about $1,500. We have to do that annually anyways for training. So we're going to be spending fifteen hundred dollars for cartridges, regardless of whether we we do this or not, because you have to you have, we have to deploy these cartridges every year for training. Um, I just had something else that I was thinking of as far as the. Uh, I have two more. I have two more questions oh, too. It'll, it'll, Go ahead. How many times in a year does the Whitley police officer use a taser in an actual? About a non-training circumstance. So thankfully, not often. We've had to we've had to use these in six years. We we haven't thankfully we haven't had to actually deploy probes. That mean like some people would say shooting the cartridge at them to deploy the probes, um, because the vast majority of the people they've either seen videos, they've seen it happen, or they've had it happen to them, and they don't want it to happen again. So when we turn the taser on, there's a red laser that comes out. And there's a flashlight that comes on that's on it. When they see that laser, 99.99% of the time, you, you gain compliance just based on that. And that's what, what we've had is either the activation of the laser telling somebody you're about to get tased, and you turn the laser on, turn the taser on, laser comes on, and they're like, okay, I comply, I give up. They they don't want it's a it's a five second, we call it a five second ride. Where you're being electrocuted from 50,000 volts of electricity for five seconds. So deter. Yeah, we that. we've all done it on the department. As part of our training, we've all we've all been tased. I, I don't want it to happen again. <laughs> Nobody wants it to happen again. It it gets your attention for sure. Um, so yeah, we I would say less than a dozen times we've had to use it for the, for that effect since we've had them. But from my perspective, one time's enough. Because if I didn't, if they didn't comply with me having to activate the, the laser on the taser, that means I would have had to hit him with my baton, wrestle with him on the ground. I could have got hurt. They could have got hurt with a taser. Pop. They 
they go down to the ground, you handcuff them. Five seconds later, nobody's hurt. There's no residual effect of it. The, the worst you're going to have, and I, I can pass around a little prong too. It's kind of like a fish hook that's been straightened out. It just it goes into your body like a half an inch. That, that's what connects the, the current. So you, you get a little pinhole that you may have a couple of drops of blood. That's the worst that, that you get from it. Um, there, there have been, unfortunately, there have been circumstances where somebody's standing on a roof and an officer will tase them, and then obviously they stiffen up, they're going to fall off the roof. So we have in our policies, we're not going to tase people that are on bridges or roofs and things like that. Um, so, well, you answered my other question, training. which was do they, do you feel like they're an effective part of, of policing? And it sounds like for Absolutely. you, they and, are. And I, I teach defensive tactics at the at the police academy. So all these other tools that we have, I instruct recruits on how to use these tools. Um, some departments have gotten the, the tasers. They take that other stuff off of their belt, which I'm not a big fan of because we're trained in how to use all those other tools. Um, but they feel that the tasers are, are so effective that they don't need a baton anymore. They don't need their OC anymore. But it's an electronic device. It's a battery-operated device. They could fail. Something could happen. They could break. It's not going to work 100% of the time. You could miss. There's a lot of things that can happen where I'd have to go to another level of force. So we still carry everything that we're trained with, but absolutely 100% of the time, the taser is going to be the first thing in somebody's mind. I would I would pull my taser out and activate the laser way before I would spray somebody with OC, and we can do it at the same level. <laughs> But if I spray somebody with, with mace, now I've got to decontaminate them. I've got to wait 45 minutes for that for the for it to work through their system and out of their eyes, and their skin's going to be burning. We've got to get the medical attention. It just nobody really wants to do that. On top of I have to put them in the cruiser. So now I got to decontaminate the cruiser. I got to drive back to the station with all this stuff in the air. So it's these these are by far the, the best tool that that we have. And then the cameras are by far the best. From again, like a, a liability perspective, an officer um, accountability perspective, a public safety perspective. There's, I just, I can go on and on and on about the, the effectiveness of these things. Uh, it sounds like this is the way the department, you know, by preference or by mandate, is going to go, and will continue in the future beyond yes. the five year period. <clears throat> And I'm just wondering what this community doesn't consider the funding source, whether this might more appropriately be taken from your operating budget since it will be an annual expense in perpetuity rather than a one time expense, which is what this committee usually works on. So it, it, it probably will end up that way. Well, yeah, I'm just yeah. Wondering it could be so whether, whether we should be considering this or whether this is something yeah. that should be considered by the finance no. committee as part of. We just consider the purchase of the. the but, but it's but it's also yeah. you said that the actual equipment is probably less than half of the total expenditure. It's a contract. Mm -hmm. you're so it's a, into a contract for services. It is. So I, I came I came to this committee because yeah. um, right now we're looking at the. 60,000, which I can already take some off of that, looking at some of the things in the subscription. And we're, uh, we're currently applying for a federal grant that could pay for some of um, some of the uh, hardware. And there's a state grant that's going to be coming up that we could put money towards it. So we could reduce that cost. But what, what I'm looking at <clears throat> is the possibility of, we could also save money by just paying for it up front. Paying for the over the instead of paying this much per year for five years, we could save on the, the four percent increase every year by purchasing it all at once, and then we're covered for five years. And then in five years, we can look at it again and say, okay, do we do enter another five year agreement? Do we just keep that equipment? By then, there's going to be additional equipment that's probably newer, later, you know, newer and, and better. But this this like the plant may will need those various permutations to know what. How to treat it? So this is sort of in the gray area between capital expenditure and operating expense. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, I agree. it's both, right? Yeah, it's essentially both. It, it's essentially both. Sure. So it's a question of how it treats. That's, how that's it's the same as we've been doing with the fire department, where the gear, the turnout gear, that's a mandate from the state. We well, yeah, we but, but that doesn't have the annual. We purchase or get a grant for that, 
And then if there's anything ripped on and stuff, they pay for it. But that doesn't have the annual maintenance that this entails. Sure. So you're talking that, about that, 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 that is strictly equipment yeah. and clearly capital. This is not as black and white capital because you're buying you're, you're buying, you're buying, you're buying a, a subscription, really, yeah. that includes equipment. Yeah. Correct. But a lot of what you're buying is cloud storage and training and That's, communication and things which aren't. I consider that part of the package. Well, which yeah, would, which could be paid up front. Right, right. But it, it, it's not as clear cut yeah. as firearms equipment, which is, you know, you hold it up and that's what it is. Yeah. So Jim, Jim, maybe crystal ball, when do you think the CMRs are going to come into effect? If, if I had is it pretty cloudy? I wish I had a crystal ball. <laughs> no, it's, they already have the final regulations. Um, it's just a met, they, they've been working on this thing. They actually developed post developed a body cam committee to get everybody's policies in the state. They looked at all the policies. They've already done all that work. They come up with their final draft of the policy. <clears throat> now they just it's just a matter of voting on it. Who um, needs to uh, who needs to adopt them? Who's the post the post legislative? Post you know what I mean? Who's the? It would be post. Uh, yeah, post um, and there must be some kind of a period of time where. They'll expect communities to comply. They're not going to say so, comply immediately. So the this is the, the issue is is that, and I don't want to speculate how the government works, but they're not mandating that we have to have yet. They're not mandating that we have to have tasers or body cams. So it's not technically an unfunded mandate. They're just saying if you want to have tasers, if you want to have cameras, here's the regulations you have to follow. So my guess would be that. Once they're voted, that's what we would have to have. So that's why I'm looking. It's it's going to happen within the next fiscal year. It's going to happen you know, before this budget's done and over with. If it doesn't happen before town meeting, <clears throat> so I, I agree. I think this this all is the result of the 2020 police reform bill. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's it's we've known it's coming down the pike. It's, yeah. So this sixty thousand, this is the price now, and we're approving this is for fiscal year twenty four. So will the price still be the same, or will we be able to lock them into that now because it's lower than the the ninety five? Yes, yeah. So the the quote the quote that I have would cover. Um, I would I would have the. I would have to check for sure on the because I don't have the actual quote. They gave me information on the the body cams, but they didn't give me information on the, the two of them together. So I have to look at that to say for sure. But I think that's good till June. So if this gets appropriated and voted on by town meeting, we could essentially do this before this clear starts. So we wouldn't have to wait for a, a budget item, for example. Um, but the sixty thousand is over so we're about the five year period. That's that's spread out over five yeah. years. If we if we do it in one lump sum, it's going to be cheaper. Okay. It's going to be cheaper than the five years. Um, also, with the five year plan, it, uh, I remember the other thing I was going to say. Um, every two and a half years, because the cameras are probably the things that get the most wear and tear. Um, every two and a half years, they send us new cameras on that plan, so we'll get. The cameras to start two and a half years, we'll get another camera, and then at the end of the five years, that two and a half years, we get another camera. So they'll replace the camera every two and a half years as part of the part of this plan as well. So we're essentially getting three cameras over the next five years. So they, give, they give you the camera at the end, so you'll keep the subscriptions. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Year six. laughs> they're, they're not losing money by any means. And it's it's the sales pitch, and they they have their their thing, and it's it's unfortunate, but like this this company, this watch guard company, they're probably going to do the same type of thing. They're going to come up with some subscription plan, and they're going to upgrade their software, and they're going to come out with better cameras that meet the compliance and all that stuff. This company doesn't have. They were bought out by Motorola, which is the same company that has our radios or portable radios, um, so they don't have. Electronic control weapons or tasers. They don't have those. Taser is the Axon is the the main company, but Taser is a brand name. Um, so everybody calls it a Taser, but 
is that's the brand name that Axon uses. So there's other companies out there, but so Axon, we're, not, we're not deciding that now though. Pretty okay. much we're just deciding with which company you're gonna go. You're not deciding right now which company you're gonna go with because a better deal could come up between now and then for less money in theory. In theory. Yeah. I'm not saying one way or the other. In, in theory. But I, yeah, I wouldn't trust it. Well, I would think if the regs come out, then you would think that would create a mad rush for equipment that would meet the regs. So oh, it's already it might be alternative. Yeah, they're already rushing to they're already rushing to do this. But again, we've we've had these tasers, Axon. We've had them. They've been around for much longer than any other company. I don't want to be the first one to buy taser from Acme Taser Company and right. find out that it. <laughs> It doesn't work. But well, as long as, it's as long as the red laser works, almost all the time. We get get some of those cat lasers. Yeah. 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 lasers and things that go. Yeah, yeah. Just and see what happens. Yeah, and, and in the area, I mean, speaking from our perspective, um, what, what we've had to deal with, there's been a number of the taser deployments in in other towns around us, Deerfield, Sunderland. Greenfield. I mean, it's it's happened. One of the, one of the times where I had my finger on the trigger, ready to pull it, was um, the Sunderland officer was getting assaulted and slammed around and beat up, and I got there as his backup. And the only thing that stopped him was me turning on my taser, and he said, "I'm done." So he he fought with the the Sunderland officer for eight minutes before I got there and gave up as soon as I hit the the laser. So. That's somebody that's probably experienced it in the past. <laughs> Didn't want to experience it again. But but yeah, it we're we're coming into unfortunately we're we're coming into a more more violent um, society. I mean, just people from a law enforcement perspective, people are challenging police officers more. They're they're getting their cameras in your face, they're doing the First Amendment audits to try to get you upset, to try to get you to react. To try to get you to, to use force on them so they can sue you, they can sue the department, they can sue the town. This is stuff that that's happening across the nation. It's it's un, it's an unfortunate situation because there's you know there's the vast majority of law enforcement are, are good people doing good things, and you you've got a, a few bad apples that are that are causing problems and that are causing society to become more violent towards police officers, and we're. For whatever reason, we're experiencing an extreme volume of mental health cases, and there's people that have that they didn't have tasers, and then this person's coming at them with a weapon, and they're in a mental health crisis, and they end up getting shot with a with a gun when you know, a taser could have solved that problem and not cost somebody their life or or limb. So, so there's there's many reasons. I mean, we could go on and on of the, the good reasons and the bad reasons. But I love it. These, um, these pieces of equipment, but it is the it's it's our norm now, but it's it's just going to improve in the, in the future. There's things that are going to get better. Training is going to get better. There's options, virtual reality training type of stuff. There's suits that we can get that we can shoot darts at each other without having to get electrocuted for five seconds. So so that's gonna that would be a nice a nice feature to have as well, so we don't have to. I have a question. Sure. Uh, this has been really informative. I want to just explore this uh, this question of vendor lock-in because you're talking here about a plan that involves some amount of acquisition of capital equipment and also an ongoing subscription. And I think what I want to understand is like when you get to the end of say a five year subscription, what does the town own at that point if you choose not to renew your subscription or you've decided that that particular vendor is not doing everything that you wanted or there's a better vendor. So do you basically have to you know, return all your cameras and tasers or do you still own some capital equipment that is has a useful life of its own beyond five years that could then be, you know, put under a different vendor model. Yeah. So after after five years, we own the equipment. We could continue with the with the subscription. We could start a new five year plan. Um, but 
after five years, it would put us right where we are now with having to, to deal with everything on our own, our own storage and our own you know, uploads. Um, nothing would be done. There would be no subscriptions after that. Yeah, so you just lose all your software. Okay. Yes, wow. we, we'd wow. lose the ability to automatically upload it to the cloud. We would have to pay for our own cloud storage or just go back to putting it on an external hard drive. But that's, in fact, I would, I would assume in five years that that's probably not going to be an option. Okay. I, I think there's going to be a mandate that says that you will have, we're going to have to have this level <clears throat> of, of security for your storage. Uh, people are going to have to have access other than right now i'm the only person on, on the department that has the ability to to delete a video or download a video edit a video to give to the to the da's office um this would having it as a, a cloud story like i said the, the district attorney's office would have access to be able to, to get the videos and things like that so so it, it's not going it's not going backwards it's not going to stay the same as it is now Things are definitely going to be changing in the future, but yeah, we would we would own all the the tasers and we would own all the, the cameras. And I should have mentioned that before. I apologize for not mentioning that, but that's this plan includes five tasers and five cameras. Okay. We currently have six tasers and three cameras. Uh, we would do it five and five, and then be able to have uh, two officers would share a taser, two officers would share um, a camera. So they would essentially be issued. So we wouldn't have. 10 people using one device and that's just not the way and we've had plenty of situations where we've had more than two officers or more than three officers that respond so you don't want to be the one that doesn't have a camera that doesn't have a, a taser so when you say you get upgrades or you get replacements at two and a half year interval so the camera is, itself is that an upgrade to whatever the latest model is or simply a replacement of the existing model um, well, if, if the technology is changing, yeah, yeah. Upgrade. If, if they have if they have the same exact camera, yeah. then we would get that. If they don't have that camera anymore, and they've upgraded, say say it's a 1080 camera resolution, and they go to a 2K camera, then we would get that one. If they if they're not making the 10, you, you automatically camera. get whatever engineering changes have been made yeah. to a product. Well, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if they're making the that's all right. they wouldn't they wouldn't set aside two of them to put in a box. Well, no, but, but if, if they're, three years they're maybe. taking two different yeah. models, yeah. you know, a you know, 1080 and a 2K, <clears throat> you know, and both are available. It's not that one has replaced the, you know, completely replaced yeah. the other. Do you get the upgraded model or do you get the existing? I, I would have to check with them, okay. but uh, we would get at least the, the current. Well, yeah, you certainly get to yeah. replace it, but it does it. Yeah. Automatically upgrade is part of our problem here is that we haven't gotten upgrades that we yeah. don't have to get. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to assume it out. Check right. out first, but yeah. Does the um the fee that you're paying, does that include if there's any damage or something needs to be replaced or repaired? Yes. Yeah, that's that's full. I mean, if if you get into a fight with somebody and you have to tase them and you falls on the ground and somebody runs it over, they would nail me a new taser. I also just want to make sure I clearly understand the urgency argument here, right? So I hear urgency of this acquisition driven by this new subscription model offers a lot of valuable features that are so useful that by not having them, you're really at a disadvantage. So it's kind of urgent to be able to get access to those new features. So that's one aspect. I also thought I heard you suggesting that existing equipment in the form of existing owned body cams, existing owned tasers are at about their end of life. You might be able to extend those, the life of those somewhat longer, but, um, but, but really I just wanna make sure I've fully and completely understood the, the key points for the earth. Oh, and also, urgency driven by costs are going up. So let's jump on the opportunity now. So I want to make sure I've heard all the key points about urgency. Yes. And just to add one thing, the, the compliance issue that once once this is voted on, once it becomes a CMR, then our current devices would be out of compliance. Right. So that's right. the that's the the third third urgency issue. But you don't know when that's going to happen. 
We don't, we don't have it. It could, they could vote on it this month. They could vote on it in three months. We, okay. we don't know when it's going to happen. All we have okay. is the final draft of the CMR that they sent out saying, this is what we're going to be voting on. It's just a matter of when, when they voted on it. It's not far away. It, it will, it will be soon. Okay. We're not going to wait on something like this for, for two years or even another year. It's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Perfect. A short period of time. Are there, are there any other questions? No, the, I have. I brought the the taser and the camera. If anybody wants to just Thanks, look buddy. at it, the taser doesn't have a battery in it. It doesn't have any cartridges, so it doesn't turn on. Oh. It's just <laughs> it's just a piece of plastic. No, 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 sorry, Grant, I can hold it up to the camera, but where are the uh, little prongies? Yeah. At I least have, you have to be able me <laughs> from here. The, so this is the this is the the cartridge that it would shoot. So essentially, how it works is if this is pointed in this direction, one probe, and this is the probe, one probe is gonna come out straight and one's gonna come down at an angle. So you get a spread. And that's where if I hit you in the leg and I hit you in the chest, that gives the widest spread. It's the most effectiveness of, of the, of the uh, taser. If they're super close together, you get less effectiveness. If they're only a few inches together, or a few inches apart, you get less effectiveness. You want a larger spread. So you notice that there's, there's an angle, one goes straight, one points down. So this, this doesn't have any probes in it. This is just what the cartridge would look like. So that's not gonna hurt anybody. This, just be careful with this. I can send this around too. This is what will come out. And there's a little string, which is gonna be the, the actual wire. Keep in your pocket. So, okay. <laughs> so this is this is what it would, would look like if you, if you hold it by that and you won't. Just yes. don't touch the point, Dan. Like what wallet. is that? That's what sticks. Yeah, that's that's the probe. Yep. Yeah. So that that shoots out. Yeah, wallet, that shoot yeah. out. Shoot out at the four hundred feet per second. Load it to this, and it sticks into your skin. And it yeah. goes through wow. clothing and jackets. It does. Yeah. Yep. So how do I jump if someone's going to shoot one like that? <laughs> do you jump? Do you dive? <laughs> is, is you know, anybody has anybody ever done? Paintball or seen paintball, you shoot like a little plastic ball filled with paint. Yeah. Um, these come out faster than a, a paintball, so there's no way of ducking that. So you, you gotta you gotta anticipate it. Yeah, you gotta anticipate <laughs> just zigzag. But they have limited range. Yeah, so so the so we have two two cartridges. Yeah, back two, two two cartridges that are available for the new device. We only have one cartridge that's available for the device that we currently use. It's a 25 foot range. Um, the new devices, you can put a 25 foot cartridge or you can put a three and a half foot cartridge. So there's two different cartridges. One's we call it close quarters because they found that 90% of, so when this when this first came out, say, okay, we're gonna be 15, 20 feet away. That's how far away we're gonna hit you with it. So we get the proper spread. But they realize that if you are fighting with somebody, that happens within three feet. So trying to get a spread from our current taser at three feet just doesn't happen. So it's not effective. It's not going to stop the person. So they created a cartridge that's designed for three feet is the, the maximum spread that you would get. So we could we could discharge it from three feet away, and it would have the same effectiveness as our 25-foot they would have the same spread. It's just a bigger, a bigger angle. I think I have one with me to show you the angle, but it, it just spreads out quicker. So um, yeah, both probes, it's it's kind of like electrical current. If one probe goes in and one misses you, then there's nothing. It just hurts because you got a probe stuck in you. It, you don't get the, the incapacitation. So you need both probes to, to stick in in order for it to. The work. I think the answer is we want to try to get horizontal so <laughs> to avoid it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But part of our training, a, a, a um, part of our training accounts for that. Turn the taser the other way, and then yeah. <laughs> so is the so is the horizontal. And the, the I mean the features for the device. There's so many improvements to it. Like right now with the device that I have. We call it a drive stun, which is just the arc that I can put into your leg to give you those bee stings. Um, in order to do that, I have to take the cartridge off of the taser, and then I can do that. Uh, with this one, I can leave the cartridges in, and I can do that drive stun, so I don't have to, while we're fighting, I have to try to get the cartridge out to be able to <laughs> drive stun you. It's, it's, they, they made some real improvements, and unfortunately, it comes at the cost of somebody getting hurt. 
and saying, oh yeah, you know, too many cops are getting hurt. We need to fix this, <laughs> fix this problem. And that's kind of a problem with the ones we are currently carrying compared to these. There's there's no comparison really with them. So. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank Thanks you. Do you have any other questions? If, I, if you want, Brian, I could submit something to have, uh, have it in actual writing. Well, I, I think we'll just have to figure out when it goes to the finance and select board. Okay. Where is it? Different. Like, yeah, just different, different cost options. Okay. It's be, I think that's going to be good. The, the other the other thing as far as the subscription stuff, if we because I asked them because I figured it'd be a question. So what if we buy the equipment now and then we decide next year or the year after we decide to add on the subscription? Doesn't work that way. It's you have to buy the five year plan. So they're they gotta make money, I guess. Yeah. But, so that's not an option for us to buy stuff now and then get a subscription later on. Unless we're at the, the end of our five years, then we could do that. Right. Okay. <laughs> Without the subscription, you might not be in compliance. I mean, you Correct. Know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So they're kind of forcing the, the subscription on you. It's it's written right into the, the CMR that has to be able to automatically upload without having to log into a device to, right. to do it. And that's what they do as soon as you turn it off, it automatically uploads. So you're paying. You know, I think it's an LTE connection, like a cell phone connection, so it can send the signal up to the cloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely costs associated with it. Thank you. Thank you. So, how do we want to? Um, how does the committee want to proceed? Um, so, we have in terms of reviewing the other projects. We have the additional information. I know there was a request to do a, a, a site visit at the school that hasn't happened yet. I wanted to make sure that we actually have a, a good grasp as to what the project would be and have the answers before you know made that visit. I don't know if we feel that that visit should happen before voting or after voting, or if we want to talk about other projects. I'm not sure how everybody wants to go about this. I'm assuming we're going to prioritize projects in the past, like we have according to the criteria that the, the committee adopted in the past. If that's if that assumption is wrong, then we should talk about that. Um, but thank you again. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Um, how do we want to move forward? Is your, yeah. I think we can talk about everything. We just put the schools aside for now since we haven't done the visit. I, I do think one. a visit to the school would be really useful. It, it really might. I mean, it, it does feel like we can do voting on and discussion, voting and priority, prioritizing of other projects and then finish off with the school. I don't believe or recall that we kind of need to have our heads around all the projects and sort of calibrate our expectations. I mean, we could even just, you know, given that we just heard about two projects, we could prioritize those and then go on for as much time as we have tonight. Is that how we want to do it? I'm, sounds good. I'm with whatever. Yeah, that sounds fine. Um, so do we want to start with those projects or do we go down the list or what do we want to do? Well, the projects we just heard today are fresh in our minds. So why don't All right. we? Just do those. Library, electrical system, safety, and plumbing upgrades. 14,595. Yeah. Um, do people have the project prioritization criteria? I can copy these if you need them. Um, in the past, I think it's kind of been a, a melee. Someone shouts out something and then <laughs> everybody jumps on them and tells them why they're wrong. And then <laughs> All right. Well, I'm happy to be the one that everyone tells me I'm wrong. I'm hearing for the, for the, well, for both of the library, well, we only heard about really the electrical system safety and plumbing upgrades. I did hear an A level prior urgency for the electrical system safety and plumbing upgrades. I heard about 
um, safety hazards due to use of extension cords and so forth. Um, I heard urgency associated with, you know, we've renovated these bathrooms and an accessible bathroom to boot, but they're like wicked cold because there's no heating. Um, I mean, uh, move to elect uh, electrifying, I think, is maybe a little bit more B level. But I heard enough in the case for urgency that that's where I would put at least the electrical system safety and plumbing upgrades project. I think I would put them put that at a B, um, partly because those are conditions that have been in existence for a while. Uh, they've been stepping over extension cords that didn't just start this year. Uh, so, uh, hmm. That doesn't make them safe. It doesn't make them safe, but it wasn't safe last year. We, you know, it was not anyone's radar. So important, but not necessarily urgent. I guess that's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. What about the issue of, you know, Hot water is not hot enough. I mean, you have an employee or employees there or people who need access to hot water. There's a kitchen. Um, you know, you know, I hear the point like, well, you know, they've lived with it for <laughs> this many years. So it can't be that urgent, right? But on the other hand, it's just maybe it's reached an intolerable level where it now com compared to all the other things that we've invested in Nicholas in the library, this wasn't as urgent as those other things. And now this is really rising up there. And there is there is a health issue with not having hot water. Do you need hot water to like clean dishes properly and wash your hands and all that? So if the water is really that low, that tepid, that's probably. And it seems like this day and age, yeah, like right. It's it's gonna COVID they don't have you can't wash your hands. <laughs> I'm hearing more A's than B's. I I am more inclined to say A. <clears throat> yeah. You go with that. Yeah. Yeah. Go with that. All right. That's fine. Uh, please. I mean, to me, it seems like it, it has to happen. If I understood all that. Yeah, that sounds sounds like this happened. My only question is whether that seems whether it's something that we consider as capital, right? Or but, get, given that this is going to be the uh, internet connectivity in particular is going to be ongoing forever, whether we somehow find a way to take it out of capital and put it into operating. Right. But that's, I mean, the, the concern right now is if we think it's a priority or not, then the finance yeah. committee can decide if it seems to be. I, I would say it's a, it's a priority because it's going to be a mandate sooner yeah. rather than later yeah, in any case. That's the way I feel. Yeah. So that's going to be an A. Yeah. I was leaning towards A as well, just because, you know, even all of the, well, all of those additional features, in this day and age, I mean, the absence of, I mean, I, now I start to worry like, wow, in the current system, they've just got this laptop, it's not secured. They have to apparently get chips off of these cameras periodically or dock them to upload the video. I mean, it's just like, there seems to be all kinds of opportunities for loss of data. Um, the fact that the new system automates a lot of, turning on cameras when certain things are happening, like handguns are being withdrawn or tasers are being withdrawn. So I was on the fence, A versus B, given like, well, I could sort of say, well, almost like Nicholas's argument before, like, well, they've, they've, they've got body cameras now, they've got tasers now, they don't use their tasers that often. So maybe we can extend the life for another year, but I guess I'm still, 
kind of more on the A side of the fence here. Well, they'll be out of compliance. That to me is right. So they won't yeah. be allowed to use them that, once those that, laws get passed. The, the urgency is caused by the compliance. Yeah, but Nicholas keeps, I think, bringing up this point like once they require this, there will be some presumably reasonable period of time to allow police forces across the Commonwealth to catch up. So it's not like it's going to go into effect overnight. I mean, we're not out of compliance now. I mean, there's a risk, I suppose, that this could come become a compliance issue as we get into 2024. Anyway, like I said, I'm... And there's also a risk that the price that he's quoted will not, will be rescinded and it'll go back up to the 95,000 that he was originally... Well, that's talking. true too, right. You know, and I want to save money like all of us, so... I'm not a hard, you know, I'm definitely more on the A side than the B side here. Okay. Most people are feeling A. A. Yeah. 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 A. Um, so do we want to back up to the top? Start at the top. Yeah. Um, install double lane batting cages. So I sent out an email requesting more information and I got a, I'll get the committee of the information email back and then. Uh, there's no connection back. <laughs> it's a C for the way. It's kind of an argument for C. Yeah, I would yeah. say C. C. Yeah. yeah, it'd be nice, but yeah, that's just an open want. <laughs> that was easy. Easy. Yeah. Oh, we have way on the school. Yeah. 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 So just on that, Brian, you are going to coordinate a time where we can visit. Yeah, I was hoping we could do that before we end the meeting. Yeah, because that is a that is a ton of money, and I think it'd be super helpful to be on on the ground to understand that better. Yep. Um, I feel like Bill is sort of a little bit like resistant to providing information that a town might want to evaluating these expensive decisions. I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't quite understand. You work with him. I met him once. You met him once. Oh, yeah, and it would have nothing to do with the school. Oh, school committee, nothing. No. no. Okay. No. Um, yeah, yeah, and maybe he could, we could in, invite him to come with us. Yeah. Point out everything. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of things. I just have, have, have the whole feed in system. <laughs> Every year. A lot of money. But that's why we'll, we'll need some explanation back. back. Uh, Chrissy, no, she's she's very informed as well. Yeah. Okay. The principal. Okay. Uh, library window uh, and chimney repair restoration. But what about uh, the flooring? Flooring for the oh, the elementary school flooring is also wrapped up in the air conditioning. We're going to put all that aside for now. Yeah. Right. Yes. I, okay. I would say that in A, the library, the window repairs. Uh, yeah, the pictures look pretty bad. Yeah, and yeah. it's the kind of thing that if you wait, it, it could get a, it could become a lot worse. And it, yeah, yeah. This is a pay now or pay a lot more later scenario. It's one of the least expensive. It is the least expensive item on the list. So is that A? Yeah. Yes. Dan? Yes, I agree. Okay. Um, transfer station, the transfer station slash slash highway department security cameras. He gave us a quote that was out from a couple of years ago. Oh, that quote was old. December yeah, twenty twenty one. Yeah, that was a year old. back. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the other thing I, I was thinking about afterwards is how much does it cost the town in dump costs to have people leaving stuff. There. Yeah, I don't. We're talking about the dump truck. Talking about, no, the, talking about the security, the security the cameras. Oh, oh, the camera. highway department. Oh, yeah, yeah and, I, and I, I don't think that they have a. I don't. I don't think they have a. A number. A, a, a figure for that. Well, that did catch my eye was he was talking about one of the one over the fuel tank. And I was like, how much? How many people are stealing fuel from the? <laughs> they have to be able to get it. From the highway, you know. 
Yeah. Because it's out, well, well, the tank's outside. So. Right, but they can't turn it on without actually getting in the building. Right. What is that? That's at the high yes. I'd say that's C. I think I'm C2 on this one. Um, yeah, I mean, I it bothers me that people, I mean, it's so free access in that area. <laughs> and the fact that there's no surveillance, I mean, that, and even with the police station right there, like, it bothers me, but I'm having a hard time seeing the the urgency or it just, I didn't get a clear case that in the absence of surveillance, um, we're going to incur large and growing costs. Did anyone else? Well, I think we, you know, we're categorizing this so that it, it is going to be looked at by the finance committee. It's not that we're telling them, telling them not to. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be looked at. So we're just categorizing that out of what we have received, that would be at the lower level of the C. Okay. I would agree with C. Yeah, me too. Okay. Still seems so high. <laughs> I just don't understand that. I Eleven, twelve thousand dollars. Yeah, I for mean, some security cameras. Honestly, my son put white little cameras outside of the camper and could watch everything from his phone wherever he was. <laughs> you know, for Maybe like twenty bucks a week. Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> like at twelve thousand dollars. I mean, that's when we were required to. Um, we needed to have surveillance when we first had um, early voting, the legitimate you know, mail-in vote. We had to have a camera on the. We just bought a ring camera. Right, that's what my that's what my son does. Yeah. <laughs> and I wonder if maybe something temporary, you know, even temporary. Just, see, just to see. I would works. picture us, you know, yeah. whatever happens with the highway garage if it gets torn down, I just picture the camera still up and <laughs> yeah, knock everything <laughs> down, and there goes ten thousand dollars. <laughs> I mean, I'd almost suggest they just get a decoy camera and put up a sign that says area under 24 hour surveillance. And that could just be a deterrent. Or a police sign with an arrow to the police station. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right, so that's, okay. we said that's C, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, fire department replaced pagers. I wasn't clear on the urgency of this. Well, we said they would, they're going to operate how they are for the next two to three years, and then. And if the county is working on the so grants. So B. Or C. The patient system likely won't go alive for at least three years. It won't go live for three years? The new, the new system, I think, and I, I, my so understanding is when the new system goes live, the old system will no longer function. Right. Yeah. So, so when he says to replace the pagers because the new radio system makes them obsolete, they're, this new radio system isn't going live for three years. Three years. Okay. That seems like it could be. Like, oh, I think the pager system, I think they're separate. So, oh, so my wait. understanding is that the, the pager system is operating off the old Regional, yeah, I think, uh, I think they one. need the pagers. So let's see the idea that uh, the implementation of this whole 800 frequency is going a little slower than they expected. But the funds, like when we started with it, you, you got to go for the funds when they're first available. Right. I mean, they are going to need to replace the pagers. It's just yeah. a question of when, right? And even if money was appropriated, not gonna. So it okay. sounds like there's a C emerging consensus. I would be more inclined, I think, to a B. That's where I am. Yeah, I think a B. Yeah. It needs to happen, but it's not urgent. Sounds like. B yeah, is I like B. Yeah. yeah, and it also needs to be seen how much money, whether that plan will come through. B sounds good. B it is. 
Highway Department replaced 2008 F550. <clears throat> and also the next one is the 2013 F150. We want to take these together as separate. Sorry. Let's put it in there and, and let them decide if they want to defer it. I think uh, the way capital looks would be. I'd say B. Can't keep going without them. No, can't they can't do they can't keep working without them. It's 15 years old. I think we put right. this off for last year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. at least was. That's why I don't like bumping them because every time you bump them, now we got a pickup that's due too. So. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of the, the danger we run into is we push things and then we get off schedule. But but I don't know that that's kind of I, I, really control the day. I, I don't know that the dump truck, the 15 year old dump truck, is on a schedule anyway at this point. Well, I think I think he sort of has a in his, in his thought process and his planning process. Yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling B here, not A for the F five fifty. I would say it's an I would go for A because only because we put it off last year. We just can't keep pushing it back every year. And then there comes a time to say we got to do this. And wasn't there like what I seem to remember is that last year there was some question about how that was going to be financed. Did we make it a B last year or an A? Oh, yeah. This, I remember we had this ninety-four thousand dollars. We had a B class. to B last year, and so. Fred thinks a year uh, with a year past that raises it to an A. And we could call it a B forever. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. True. Yeah. No. Um, I mean, it says it has been operating for you know many many hours. He describes it as being in fair condition. Um, so far, the you know cost of repair has been low, but that could be, we could be at the tipping point. Um, you know, you might say the argument for B could be, well, you know, once you get your first big repair bill, is it at risk in the next year of failing catastrophically? I'm not seeing that. Or do we want to- It's a 15 year old truck with it's heavy price. use, it's always at risk. Of failing catastrophically, and my so guess is that if it failed, it would be the worst time. It would be a bad time and take a long time to get fixed. Yeah, I would say that's big. Be without it for a long time. So, did the, so we are hearing a consensus emerging around A for this one. So Fred's I an see. A, Dan's an A. I say A. Yes. Yeah, Dan's an A. Can live with an A. We have an even number of committee members, so just <laughs> yeah. I'd say yeah, we'll go with A. Ones. Okay. So so we that that's for the dump truck. That's for the dump truck. Yeah. That's yeah, the small dump truck, right? Get five to fifty. Now the truck that's in worse condition, the 2013 F-150. That's what I was thinking. The next one is in worse condition. Yeah. But then, like, how many more vehicles behind that are going to keep coming towards us that need to be replaced? Like, well, if we keep up with that, we have to get ahead of them, right? Every five years. Yeah. Well, if we keep, yeah, if we keep funding the vehicle stabilization funds, at least some of the money will come out of that. Right. So just to back up, last year we put that as a B and the finance committee just appropriated nothing for it. They just, I think I saw somewhere it was deferred. He, uh, I think he suggested that it not be funded that year. 
because it was in good enough condition. I see. You want the tractor was a higher. Uh, thank you. Priority. The tractor was a higher knew. priority. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Last year we had the tractor up. That was twenty years old. Right. So this this the, the game plan here is to purchase an electric hybrid. He Keith does write that um, you know the whole additional money. He says you know we'll also need to provide money for charging agreements and so forth. So I'm a little cloudy on where that comes from, but it sounds like the main argument is commit to buying this. It's going to take a while due to supply issues to actually get it. And that gives us some running room to dot these other I's and cross these T's. That is that what others are hearing? I think that's true. And I yeah. think that the charging issue, I mean, the infrastructure for charging, I don't think is all that expensive. I think yeah. the complicated thing is the thing he keeps bringing up is that he brings that home every night and that's when it needs to be charged. And so how it is he and all the other department heads bringing home their trucks? How's that going to be straightened out with the towns? Oh, yeah. but as far as total cost, the thing will be cheaper to operate than, yeah. than a gas-powered vehicle. It's also not $50,000 anymore. Ford is, it keeps raising their price every six months. It's fifty five dollars for their cheapest model. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a waiting list still in a year. I, I, I have, uh, I, I've been on it since June of 2022, and I'm driving uh, Toyota Tacoma. So, uh, yeah, they haven't offered me a, a vehicle yet. They said hopefully in 2023. For F 150? Yeah, for the Lightning versus that truck. Jeez. Like they, all, all the more reason to make it a priority, get on the list. Get on the list. And I think it's all ramping up. I mean, they are they are appearing. Yeah. They're on the street all of a sudden, and they yeah. haven't been up until last month or so, so. And we'll just have to work out the issues of taking it home and charging. Yeah. I mean, by the time we get it, Keith won't be the highway superintendent. So, <laughs> right. I look at it this way. Highway department's going to be out in full force when we have a storm. The storm's going to mean power outage. Now, you're not going to take it home and charge it because you don't got no power. Right. I wouldn't be in a rush to go electric with our <clears throat> vehicles that are needed for safety. That should be backseat. Well, the places that would have those vehicles would, in theory, have backup generators anyway, yeah. they would provide the power. That's hmm. we what got is backup the generators for enough buildings. So it it's okay. Anyway, and it's um, Keith's truck, right? To get like, what is he? No, I just counted it. I've been using it all day long. Right, let's keep let's figure out kind of going. Just get from place to place. Yeah, driver. Yeah. It's okay. like, yeah, it's often just like somebody's in it going to get another piece of equipment. Yeah, like swap yeah. their or they're putting in the the snow stakes or yeah or yeah but it's usually yeah, driven around yeah. town it's not driven out of long distances so overnight charge will usually take care of it i think we should go with yeah, an a on this also yeah i agree a yeah i think so too okay i can do and we think and again i'm that sometime before the end of fy 2024 june of 2024, that we think this vehicle will actually become available and purchasable. Yes. Yeah, Ford is seriously ramping up their production of these because okay. they're proving very popular. Did you have to put money down to be on the list? <coughs> Barely, $100. Oh. Refundable. <laughs> and they said, like, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The A's have it. Didn't get me very much, though. Um, Christian Lane Colbert, final design. Seems uh, really pretty important. Yeah, really. How can we not make that an A? I mean, we could say, who needs Christian Lane? <laughs> well, and, and it involves the, uh, the lower aquifer and the issue of, I, I mean, I assume that's what's going on is, not making sure that whatever they do just 
doesn't compromise. Yeah, they're making us do it first before they do the other cover that this one's going to feed into on Route 5. Uh -huh. About 200 feet away. That's why they want us to do that was first. Mm -hmm. So the state doesn't have to pay for it? No. Right. The research and where they're going to hit, hit something down there other than muck. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they paid for the first one, so that's fair. Does it? What is the? Is that a grant to have done that cover? What does that cover? Well, we had the grant. No. Oh, okay. That got us to like seventy. It, it got us to pretty much two designs. Now they need to do the borings to figure out whether there's actually abutments that they can place on bedrock, or we'll have to figure something else out. So I mean, we essentially are. We just need to figure out which designs you know work at this point. Well, I guess I would say it's an A. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so. A. 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 Yeah. Cataloging town maps and plans. So I want to make a, a proposal for B here. Yeah. You know, having having seen from the planning board side just how chaotic some of these filing systems are like if we got certain kinds of requests it might just be almost impossible to respond to them in a timely way um, they've got a vendor they've used before um i mean i i wouldn't make it an a i suppose it could be pushed down to a c as a nice to have but i also feel like by not investing in these kinds of things, we make life very difficult for our town employees. Um, and that's a retent, you know, there's just arguments for making this kind of investment. Uh, um, so citizens can get their requests answered in a timely way and that our town employees are able to work efficiently. Yeah, I think also would be, the, it sort of reminds me of the extension cords on the floor that we've been living with it, but we'd rather not. No. Yeah. Yeah. B, yeah, I would say B. B. I agree. So that leaves the three with the school. That now we Do we, we don't have to vote on the water department truck? That's an automatic. Yeah, I don't even know why I keep that on there, but something that they put on there. <laughs> they're going to do it anyways, whether they're going to do it or not. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, schedule. So, do we want right. to do the elementary school visit? Yeah. And this would be on a weekday during um, working hours, which is fine for me. And we should try to get this done soon, right? So should we look at like next week? I guess we're just giving you some options, Brian, and then you're gonna. Yeah, and then we can coordinate with Brian. Yeah. And we'll be doing your away. Yeah, I'm leaving on a night. I don't necessarily need to go home. Uh, I could do it this Friday. I could do it Monday. I don't think I can do it this week, but next week I can do, like if we just look in mornings up to noon, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday next week. Next week is pretty open for me. I can do Monday. I can't do this Friday. And then I can do Wednesday. Yeah, I can do Monday and Wednesday. Same here. Monday and Wednesday? Mm -hmm. The six or the eight. So, um, sir, what was the consensus there? I was just getting input from a higher power. Uh, six or the eight. Does that work? Yeah. yeah. Haven't talked about trickier that. for me on the eighth. If but if we, so I can I can move things around. So yeah, I'm open on Monday the sixth till noon and Wednesday the eighth till noon. 
They're going to want us there in the morning in school, parading through the kindergarten in the classrooms, look at the bathrooms. Or we want to, I think that'll be fine. That'll be all right. Thanks, so, all right. Um, you can access system. those bathrooms from the outside. Um, the, the side door between kindergarten and pre-K. If they didn't want us to go through the classrooms. In the past, I haven't gotten pushed back. I was coordinated with Chris again. Great. Dan. Okay, so between nine and twelve. Yeah, that would yep. work for me. Okay. What'd you decide? Uh, either the sixth or the eighth. I'm open either time. Next week in the morning, depending on what the, what they can do, right? We hope. Yeah. yeah. All right. And are you you're gonna are you gonna email Bill? Yeah, I'll, I'll email Bill Christie. Yeah. And I'll see you on it. So should we also pick a final decision meeting, or do you think we would go to the school and after seeing things, since we'll all be together, presumably everyone's going to go, we could prioritize then and there, or should we do a separate meeting? Be nice to get it done. Be nice to get it done. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we could ask Chrissy if I mean they have a conference room. They have we can meet the pre K bathrooms. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> sure. you can just like, if we're all nice standing together, we can just say, uh, Yeah, can that is my vote. If we could do the visit and do the prioritization and just get it done, that would be ideal. Yeah, okay, good idea. Awesome, sounds good. All, all right, right. Need you to adjourn. Second. Everybody in favor? Yes, yes. Okay. Bye. All right, good night, all.